Hey, this is Barry here, and you are very, very welcome to today's episode of the Passion to Profits podcast. Now, in today's podcast episode, we're going to have a look at eight ways that you can become a better content creator. Now, this podcast episode is probably more tailored towards beginners, but if you are maybe an advanced person, maybe you might be able to pick up a tip or trick and be able to use it in your own content. Now, the first thing I'd say to you is if you are going to be a better content creator, you need to be a better you. And what I mean by that is you need to be you in your content because the greatest content that you can create is going to be content where you are in it. You're going to be talking about your life. You're going to be talking about your experience. You're going to be talking about your fears, your goals, your dreams, but everything related to you. A lot of us, unfortunately, when it comes to content creation, believe that if we are to be a better content creator, we should be like someone else. We should be a clone or a copy of someone else who is more successful than us. And then we try to be like them. And because we try to be like them, we find we're not as good as them. And it just makes us want to give up. But if you bring it back to yourself and create your content about you, you're going to find that every day it's going to be easy. Because you're just going to turn on the camera and you're going to speak your mind. You're going to tell people what your fears are. You're going to tell your people what your goals are. You're going to tell people what you've learned. So all the content is going to be really personal. And because it's going to be really personal, it's going to draw people to you. Because we are attracted to people that we know, we like and we trust. And by being you in your content, it's going to build that likability. We're going to be attracted to you. And by being you, you're going to stand out from everyone else. Because everyone else is trying to be like everyone else. And if they're all trying to be like each other, well then, there's nothing standing out. Whereas if you come along today and you record your videos, well then you're going to stand out because you're basically going to be new. Because at the end of the day, you are unique. So why shouldn't you lean into that uniqueness, use it to your advantage and separate yourself from the crowd? Now the second thing I would say to you is to start from where you are. It's very easy, again, to look at everyone else and think, well, if they're all talking about this topic, well then I should be talking about that topic. I should be talking about the advanced tips and tricks. It'd be very easy for me to record a video the same way here as well, where I'm talking about all kind of highfalutin advanced knowledge tips and tricks. But I know for a fact that some people will come to this content, mightn't have ever created content, and they're just going to be lost. They won't know what I'm talking about. And again, by actually talking on topics that you and I don't have much knowledge on, it makes it harder to create the content. And you're going to find, you'll probably be found out if you do post content that is more advanced than maybe the level that you are. So instead of goofing up, instead of putting pressure on yourself, just speak from where you are. This could be day one, where you're basically just telling your audience, well, this is day one. This is the first piece of content I've created. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I'm worried. I don't know where this is going to go, but I have finally convinced myself that I'd like to be a content creator. That could be a content on day one, basically just starting where you are. And what you can do is you can actually talk about your journey instead of actually talking about the other content that other people are talking about. Again, by focusing on your journey, it's going to be your unique content. So don't think that you need to copy everyone else. You know, start with where you are. If you're only learning, tell your audience that you're only learning. And you're going to find that there will be people who will love you because they are also going to be on their journey. So they're not going to be following the people who are way ahead of them. They are going to be looking at the people who are just a couple of steps ahead of them. And you're going to find that people will slot in behind you and follow along with you on your journey. So don't get confused and don't try to put on false airs and graces and try to make yourself more advanced and show off that you're an expert. If you're not an expert, tell your audience that you're not an expert. And again, that's going to build you with your audience because you're showing that you're honest. You're not trying to pull the wool over their eyes. So be you in your content and start where you are. Another thing you do, should do is you should try and create a content calendar. Now, I'll be honest, a content calendar isn't something I do. And the reason I don't do it is because every day I have a set pattern of what I would do. So what I would do, for example, is I would record a video and then what I do is I take this video over to YouTube and then what I'll do tomorrow morning is I'll take this video, I'll cut it up into little segments, put a couple of videos on YouTube, a couple of videos on TikTok. What I'll also do with this video is I'll get it transcribed 
and I'll create three blog posts from it. Now, that probably seems like a lot of work and you're thinking, God, I could never do that. But you will eventually, over time, start kind of coming up with a process. But that's my process. So I don't need a content calendar. I just basically need to know what am I going to talk about in this video and then everything comes from there. But by having a content calendar, you know, maybe over the next week, maybe over the next 30 days, it means that when you sit down to write, record, it means you've already got an idea in your head. You've taken the pressure off yourself. Because I've seen in my own case that sometimes the hardest part of actually creating content isn't actually creating the content. It's actually coming up with an idea. So if you can give yourself an advantage where you show up tomorrow and you know exactly what you're going to talk about, it's going to make tomorrow a lot easier. So what I recommend you should do is probably each night before the following day, think about what you're going to talk about in your content. What are you going to write about? What are you going to help? You know, what are you going to say? And then just as you go to sleep, your subconscious will be working on what you should be doing in that content. But by actually marking down each day what you're going to do in advance ahead of yourself, it takes a lot of pressure off you because you'll know, you'll know what you're talking about in a week from now, a fortnight from now, you know, a month from now. And it's going to take a lot of pressure off you. But again, as I said, I don't do that. But that's because I have this kind of work process that I go through every single day. And I know exactly what I'm doing. I just need to come up with one idea for this video here. Another thing I'd say to you is to try out different formats. You know, you could find that maybe you might start off the day and you're saying to yourself, well, I'll just do videos because everybody else is doing videos. And then you sometimes you find that maybe videos aren't for you. Maybe you'd actually be better as a writer. So what I'd recommend in the beginning is it trying out different formats. You know, maybe try writing a blog post. Maybe try writing an article, putting it on Medium. Um, record a video, maybe even do a podcast. And then just try it and see where, what's more comfortable for you. What do you find easy to do? A lot of us sometimes, when we start off, don't think of the easy route. We think if something's easy for us, well then we should be doing it. But if something is easy for you, if it is something that's in your wheelhouse, why the hell would you do something difficult? If you find it very easy to sit down and record a video, you know, why would you write a blog post? Why would you record a podcast episode? Just stick to what you find easy to do. And the easier you find it, it's going to be a real help because it means you're going to do it tomorrow. You're going to do it the next day. You're going to do it the next day because it's easy. So don't fall into the trap of copying everyone else because everybody's making videos. Well, then I should be doing videos. If everybody's putting stuff on this platform, then I should be doing that. No, find out what works for you, what's easy to do and is something that you can do long term. Again, what I'd say to you as well too is to engage with your audience is that, you know, if you want to build an audience, you actually have to engage with them. You have to show that it's a two-way street. You have to show that, you know, although you are putting content out there, you are really interested in them. And you'll find that by you actually engaging with your audience, other people are going to be watching you as well. You know, sometimes you have these people who are lurkers, who will read your content, watch your content, and don't actually ever reach out to you. You know, you might think, well, nobody's watching these videos. Nobody's reading my blog posts, you know, because nobody's interacting with me. But you're going to find there will be a group of people, which are probably the vast amount of people who are lurkers. And what they're doing is they're paying attention to you. They're paying attention to what you're saying, but they're also paying attention to your actions. And by you actually engaging with your audience, it's going to make them like you more, trust you more, because it looks like you're trying to help out your audience. Now, when you think about it, if somebody is going to engage with your content, isn't that somebody that you should maybe just slow down your day and pay attention to? Because when you think about it for a moment, somebody could be on a social media platform where they're just scrolling through content after content after content, and then they come to your piece of content, and then they leave a comment. Now, for that person actually to stop and spend time with you and leave a comment, do you not think maybe that person deserves a bit of your time as well? where you actually interact with them, maybe thanking them for the comment, maybe to maybe take their comment idea and maybe use it as another piece of content. Or maybe somebody could ask you a question in your comment section and then what you can do is you can tag that person in and then the following day create a piece of content where you're showing that you're answering that person's question. Again, other people are going to be watching you and if they see that you're doing that, if you seem like a good guy or a good gal, well, you know, they will probably interact with you more often, which will build an audience and build a group around you. 
So you should be trying to do that. Now again, when it comes to comments below content, be aware of the people who are just trolling. People who just have too much time on their hands and they just stop at your video, leave a negative comment and then go on. Those comments, those you know, interactions aren't something to get into. Because although they might anger you, although they might frustrate you, that person will probably never come back to that piece of content again and are never going to see the reply that you give. So rather than maybe just arguing with that person, just ignore them. Scroll on and carry on and do what you should be doing, which is creating content. Another thing I'd say to you as well too is when you do create content, repurpose the content. What you should do is you should try and transform it into different various formats. The reason for this is by being in different formats, you're going to get in front of other people. Now in my own case here, what I'm doing at the moment, as I said earlier on, I would take this video and then I would repurpose it. So what I would do is I, again, would take the full video over to YouTube and then what I do is on my desktop, on my laptop, I would take this video, cut it down into YouTube shorts, put them on YouTube and then on TikTok. So I'm taking this one piece of content. We have a full YouTube video. We've got content, short content on YouTube. We have short content on TikTok. And then what I do is I take the transcript from this video, take it over to ChatGPT, and then I ask it to come up with three blog post ideas from it. So then what I do is I take the transcript, I create three blog posts, and that's another piece of content. So as you can see here, even though I am only recording this video here, I am getting far more use out of it. And by getting far more use out of it, it means that people can watch the full video, people can listen to my podcast, people on TikTok can see my shorts, people on YouTube can see my shorts, and people who go over to my blog will find three new blog posts based on this video, just from this single video. So I'm sure you can see by repurposing your content, it's going to put you in more places and it's less work. You know, I could try and come up with original content for those TikTok videos or those YouTube videos. I could try and come up with original ideas for the blog post. But what I'm doing by repurposing this content, just taking all that stress off me. I'm just using what I have. And that's what you should do as well too, is that when you create a piece of content, ask yourself, what else could I do this? Could I take maybe a quote out of this blog post? Could that be a tweet? Could I maybe expand an idea in the blog post that it could become maybe another video? Could it become a podcast episode? And by doing that, you'll actually be able to get more use out of it so that you're in more places in front of more people, which will build a bigger audience. And you're going to find that sometimes people won't find you on the platform that maybe you originally started off on. You know, I could find if I am only putting videos on TikTok or YouTube, I could lose out on blog readers who might never come over to these platforms, mightn't like watching videos, and I'm losing out on them. But by me having video content and text content, I have two different audiences. And again, that's just me using the one piece of content. So try and repurpose your content into as many things as you can. Another thing I'd say to you as well too is to be a parasite. Now that probably seems like a negative thing, but what I mean by that is maybe a better thing would probably be maybe a hitchhiker or something like that. What I mean by being a parasite, it's something that the great Dan Kennedy said one time, is that you should try and hitch yourself on to somebody else. And what you should try to do is you should try to feed off their traffic. Now maybe to explain that a little bit better is by me posting my video on YouTube, I am being a little bit of a parasite on YouTube because what I'm doing is I'm trying to feed traffic from YouTube over to my platform over to my content. Again, if I take my content over to Facebook, what I'm doing is I'm being a parasite to Facebook and I'm leveraging traffic from Facebook over to my blog and to my website. So try and find places where you can leverage somebody else's traffic, where you can leverage somebody else's audience, where you can leverage some asset that somebody else has to your advantage. And by doing that, it means that if you go on a platform that's getting traffic, well, then you can probably guarantee that you're going to get some traffic. But by you just putting a piece of content, maybe on your blog, who on day one has no readers, well, that video is going to lie there for a couple of weeks and maybe not get any viewers. 
But if you take that video over to a platform like TikTok that has a lot of traffic and you can try and divert that traffic from TikTok over to your blog, it means your blog is going to start gathering viewers and it's going to start gathering traffic. So what you need to do is you need to think of how can you filter people and traffic away from other places over to your content and your platforms. And by doing that, you will find it will be in the beginning, probably a little bit small. But over time, as you put more content out, that little laneways going to your places will grow and you'll find more and more people come because there is people on the Internet. There is traffic everywhere. And what you need to do is you need to try and find ways of filtering all that stuff over your platform. And as well, too, if you find that maybe if you at some stage, maybe advanced maybe for now, but if you find that maybe you're creating content, maybe writing guest posts on somebody else's blog, again, you're being a parasite over there. What you're doing is you are taking that blogger's audience over to your platform. But by you actually being on someone else's platform, like a blog, and writing that blog post, you actually gain some authority of that person because that person is allowing you to write on their platform. So if you can, be a power site. If you can, ride on someone else's coattails because it's going to make your your life a lot easier and it's going to be more beneficial for your content because you're going to be getting yourself in front of more people. Now, what I'd say to you as well too is that you should gain knowledge. Again, as you're beginning on your content creation life, you're going to find that you don't know it all and this is a learning experience. So be aware that if you do want to improve, you're going to have to learn things. You're going to have to learn things like how to maybe set up your phone properly, how to maybe set up your microphone properly, how to write a blog post that has a good headline that attracts attention. So all those things are going to be things that you're going to learn. Now, don't worry if you don't know it all. Be honest with your audience. Like I said, tell them what your journey is, what you're finding tough and how things are going for you. But you will gain knowledge over time. But what I'd say to you is not to start gathering more knowledge and doing less action. You need to take more action and less knowledge. Take the action on the knowledge that you have and then when you come to that point where you just can't go any further, go and gather more knowledge and then use it for the next phase that you go through. But too many of us unfortunately fill our heads with knowledge and don't take action. And if you want to be a content creator, that is your number one goal, creating content. It's in the title. It doesn't say that you should be reading books about creating content, that you should be watching videos on creating content, listen to podcasts on creating content. You're a content creator, so you should be creating content. And finally, what I'd say to you as well too is find out what works. Keep an eye on what happens when you put the content up. You know, you will find that sometimes when we create content, sometimes it doesn't do well on one platform, but it does really, really well on another platform. And what you need to do is you need to keep testing. You need to keep an eye on what's working and not what not what's working. Because sometimes us content creators fall into the trap that we should be putting content on Twitter. We should be putting on Facebook. We should be doing on LinkedIn. LinkedIn we should be putting on YouTube. We shouldn't be doing podcasts. We should be doing this. We should be doing that. And sometimes it just we're so busy, overwhelmed, that we just want to give up. But... By actually keeping an eye on what's working, you're going to realise and say to yourself, well, why the hell should I be putting stuff on Twitter? Because I'm not getting any traction over there. Why should I put stuff on YouTube? Because people don't seem to like my content. You know, why should I put an article on Medium when I know never get any readers from it? And by actually seeing what's working, it will allow you to focus on the things that does work so that you can grow your audience faster. Again, a lot of us sometimes don't do that. We just follow the crowd because everybody says, oh, you need to put stuff on TikTok. You need to put stuff on YouTube. You need to put stuff on LinkedIn. We just race after them, not realizing that those people who are telling that aren't even testing that themselves, don't even know if it is working or not. So that's what you need to do is you need to test and see in your own case, is this worth my while? Should I be making videos for this platform? Should I be writing blog posts over here? You know, is it worth my while going on Twitter? Does anyone interact with me? You know, if I find that no one's interacting with me on this platform, but this platform here, everybody's interacting with me, well, then you know where you should be going. So test what works. And you're going to find as you test and see what works, that is going to help you as well. You're going to see that 
some of your content ideas, you know, really go well with your audience. So what you simply do is you simply go back and you create similar topics so that you are getting better and better and better at your content creation. So I hope this podcast episode has helped you. I hope um, this has given you some things to think about. But what I would recommend is just be you and your content. Don't try and put on any airs or graces or try to be a version of someone else because we're going to see it. We're going to see it and you're just going to be making a fool out of yourself. And you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on yourself. So to take all that pressure off, just be you. Be honest. Tell people that you're just beginning your journey. You're just learning and to forgive you of your mistakes. As always, I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them below the video. And as always, have a lovely day. Take care. Bye-bye.